with your Spelly Daily Sports News Update. I am with you, your host Nathan. Now details this time, November 27th on 2022. Let's go on to the first story. Lionel Messi was almost in tears as he grabbed and shook his jersey in front of Argentina's celebrating fans, then blew a kiss and looked to the sky. With one of the most important goals of his career, Messi led Argentina to a 2-0 victory over Mexico on Saturday to ignite his team's World Cup chances. His dream of winning soccer's biggest prize and likely his last attempt is still alive. It's a weight off our shoulders, Messi said. It gives us joy and peace of mind to start again. Messi, he took a touch from Angel de Maria's pass across the face of the area and drove a low shot from 25 meters into the bottom corner to give Argentina the lead in the 64th minute. His arms outstretched. He ran toward the team's supporters who were celebrating behind the goal and was soon mobbed by his teammates. <laughs> he whirled his arms in an emotional response to scoring his 93rd and perhaps most crucial international goal. Substitute Enzo Fernandez added a second goal in the 87th minute, ensuring Argentina bounced back from a 2-1 loss to Saudi Arabia that ranked as one of the world's biggest ever upsets for the World Cup. <laughs> we lived with discomfort and kept the defeat in the opening match in our minds, Messi said. The days were very long. Now let's go to the next story. Luciana Medina was so nervous that she could barely sleep the night before Saturday's match between Argentina and Mexico, which could have all but knocked the soccer-mad South American country from the World Cup. After the game, she couldn't stop smiling. I'm so proud. I truly love the match, Medina, a 23-year-old communication student, said while wearing an Argentina jersey. I'm so happy. Argentines breathed a collective sigh of relief Saturday afternoon as the country obtained a decisive 2-0 victory over Mexico, dissipating doubts that had emerged about Lionel Messi's team after the shock loss against Saudi Arabia on Tuesday. That loss has sent the country almost into a state of national mourning. The whole week was very sad. Everyone was very aggressive as well as if they were lost without knowing what to do, Medina said. We were all very nervous. Maria del Carmen Martinez, who is 60, said she was very tense when she arrived at a plaza in Buenos Aires to watch the match on giant screens. I'm happy now. The retail worker said with a smile. It's as if the players finally woke up. Manuel Galto, who is 21, agreed he saw a different team on the field than the one that fell before Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. Now on to the next story. Mitchell Duke celebrated scoring Australia's winning goal by forming a J with his fingers in a tribute to his son, Jackson, who was in the stands, actually. Coach Graham Arnold dragged injured winger Martin Boyle, who was on crutches, into the celebratory huddle as fans sang merrily along to Men at Works Down Under, blaring over the stadium speakers after the final whistle. <laughs> Later, Arnold... He was wiping away tears. It was an emotion-filled day for Australia, which beat Tunisia 1-0 on Saturday, falling its third win 
in 18 World Cup matches. Duke gave Australia the lead midway through the first half with a header. I actually was messaging some of my family saying that I was going to score today. And I told my son that I was going to be able to share this moment with him. And that whole celebration, Duke said. I haven't seen it yet, but apparently he did it back to me from the stadium, which was a really special moment that I'm going to treasure for the rest of my life. Now on to the next story. Denmark has been here before. The Danes, they face a tense must-win game at the World Cup and to make it through to the knockout stage, similar to what they needed to do at last year's European Championship. In fact, it was much worse at Euro 2020 when Denmark lost its first two games while the squad was still trying to cope with the trauma of teammate Christian Eriksen's cardiac arrest on the field in the first match against Finland. All seemed lost. But Denmark, they beat Russia 4-1 in his final group game using Eriksen as an inspiration, qualified on goal difference, and made it all the way to the semifinals. We definitely carry that with us. Denmark forward Andreas Cornelius said after Saturday's 2-1 loss to defending champion France at the World Cup left Denmark needing to beat Australia in the last set of Group D games to advance. Eriksen is back with Denmark at the World Cup and playing at a major international tournament for the first time since that day in Copenhagen when a country and much of the soccer world watched on in horror as he lay lifeless on the field. Medics used a defibrillator to restart his heart and save his life. Cornelius was a substitute and sitting on the bench when Erickson collapsed. While terrible at the time, that experience has molded this Denmark team and has given it the resilience it will need against an upbeat Aussie team, he said. Now on to the next story. Saudi Arabia, their coach, Elve Renard, felt he disappointed his mother when Poland beat his team at the World Cup on Saturday. The French coach said before that match, that it was going to be very special for her because her parents were Polish. But she would never wear the Saudi national shirt. Don't worry. It's the first World Cup that Renard's mother has attended and she was at Luceo Stadium to see one of the biggest upsets when his team defeated Argentina 2-1 in its opening match. I'll think every week she's maybe Watching two to three games, Renard said. She loves football, so of course she was very happy. There was no repeat upset Saturday as Robert Lewandowski scored one goal and set up another in Poland's 2-0 win. She won't be happy with me this evening, Renard said. <laughs> I'm sure she's really sad. But I will tell her, you always repeat to me, never give up. Always work hard and a chance will come back. Qualifying for the second round is still possible for Saudi Arabia after it's lost to Poland though. Like I said before, we are still alive, Renard said. The 54-year-old Renard was already well liked for his success with the Saudi Arabia team since taking over in 2019 and his popularity has grown even more since the win over Argentina. Now, after their win from Argentina, let's go into a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned. 
Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Now, welcome back to Millennium News 24-7 with your daily local news update. On to the next story. After Michigan beat Ohio State with stunning ease for the second straight year, Wolverines defense back. Mike Sanristil grabbed a huge mice and blue flag and rushed with teammates to the block. Oh, the O. Oh. That's in the middle of the stadium, right in the Ohio Stadium turf. Sanders still forcefully planted that flag in the 50-yard line, and then the Wolverines mugged for the cameras. Ohio State players leaving the field barely looked their way. Again, Michigan was the best team in the game, this time by a score of 45-23. to 23. Behind career performance, by J.J. McCarthy and Donovan Edwards, the Wolverines, they advance to the Big Ten Championship next Saturday against Purdue with hopes for a second straight playoff appearance firmly in their control. As for the Buckeyes, they have to hope they can get back into the college football playoff after again crumbling in their most important game. Jim Harburg and Michigan both snapped an eighth game losing streak to their fiercest rivals last year with a cathartic 42 to 27 victory in the big house. Now they have a two game winning streak in the game for the first time in 22 years. Could not be more proud, Harbaugh said. Knew the team was focused and determined as they have been all season. This is a locker room full of heroes. Now on to the next story. After Caleb Williams perfectly faked the handoff and sprinted up the middle for the first of his three rushing touchdowns against Notre Dame, he went to the Southern California sideline and extended a stiff arm with his body coiled in a familiar way. Williams' teammates have been demanding a Heisman Trophy pose for him, and USC's spectacular quarterback is nothing, if not a team player. They kept saying it, so it just ended up doing it in the moment, Williams said with a smile and a shrug. Williams and the Trojans had plenty to celebrate, after a kid-snapping rival victory over the Fighting Irish kept them in play for even bigger honors and made Williams the probable front-runner to collect the real trophy next month. Williams polished his Heisman credentials with 232 yards, passing, and four total touchdowns. And number five, USC capped its outstanding regular season under new coach Lincoln Riley by staying firmly in the college football playoff race with a 38-27 victory with number 13 Notre Dame on Saturday night. Taj Washington caught an early touchdown pass from Williams while USC ended its four-game losing streak in its famed intersectional rivalry with the Irish. The Coliseum was packed with fans of both teams, but USC's faithful 
had a night that recorded this long struggling program's glittering past. Haha, <laughs> believe that. Now on to the next story. Isaiah Newell, he ran for the go-ahead touchdown with 8 minutes and 11 seconds remaining. And number 22, Oregon State took advantage of critical mistakes in the fourth quarter by number 10 Oregon to rally for a 38-34 to victory on Saturday. The Beavers, they trailed by 31-10 to late in the third quarter and 34 to 17 early in the fourth. But the Ducks, they gave their rivals a short field on three consecutive possessions. Oregon State converted all three drives into touchdowns without attempting a single pass. I felt like we won the Super Bowl. Oregon State receiver Tylon Lindsey, he said. Oregon State concluded by far its best regular season on the fifth-year coach Jonathan Smith, who took over a program that went 1-11 to in 2017. Didn't play our best for a long period of time, Smith said. But knowing this game was a long, long game, they found a way at the end. The Beavers couldn't have done it without plenty of help from the Ducks. First, Oregon gave up a 48-yard kickoff return by Silas Bowden and a face mask penalty set up Oregon State at the Ducks 36. Newell, he ran a 40, excuse me, he ran a 15 yard touchdown to make it 34 to 24. Next, Oregon punter Alex Bales dropped the snap and fell on the ball at his own two. Two plays later, quarterback Ben Kubranson Pounded it from one to get Oregon State with 34 to 31. Wow. And now a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. So Millennium News 24-7 with your daily local news update. I am with you, Nathan. Let's go to the next story. Welcome to Jim Harburg's previous life, Ryan Day. This is the way of things that they go at the top of college football's food chain. If you can't win the most important game of your schedule, there will be questions about whether you are the right man for the job. For the second straight season, Harburg's Michigan team pummeled Day and Ohio State. Day is 45 and 5 at Ohio State as Urban Meyer's replacement, but 1 and 2 against Michigan. We'll figure out what's next. I don't know exactly what's next right now, but that's life at Ohio State, they told reporters. When you lose, it all comes back to me as head coach, and that's probably what hurts the most. What probably hurts the most for Ohio State fans is the game played out in a way that was supposed to be the second ranked Buckeyes advantage. A back and forth affair where the quarterbacks needed to be difference makers. The third ranked Wolverines transformed themselves from ground and pound into a big play machine, ripping off five touchdowns that covered a total 
of 349 yards. Meanwhile, Day was punting on fourth and short from around midfield. In games like that, you have to play the field position game, Day said. I just feel like you're not in those situations if you're converting on third downs. Now on to the next story. Okay, Chevious Hodges, Tomlinson, Max Duggan, and fourth-ranked TCU can now look forward to the Big 12 championship game since that is next. There's even much more to play for after quite a statement to finish an undefeated regular season. Coming into every game, we have lots of doubters, says Hodges Tomlinson, the fourth-year cornerback. We know what type of team we have. We showcased it constantly, and we're an undefeated team. Condre Miller ran for two touchdowns as the Horn Frogs completed the first undefeated regular season by a Big 12 team since 2009 with a 62-14 victory over Iowa, excuse me, Iowa State on Saturday, getting them closer to making them the four-team college football playoff. They beat number 15 Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game next Saturday, and there will be no question about that for TCU, you think? It means we've got one more to play for a championship, said Max Duggan, who threw three touchdowns to different receivers. It's the next game, and I don't think we're supposed to make any bigger deal than we need to. Same mindset. Gotta have the same mindset. Now on to the next story. Mississippi coach Lane Kiffin says he has informed school officials he will be staying at Ole Miss, putting an end to speculation that he was the leading candidate to fill the head coaching vacancy at Auburn. Same as I said last week, I'm staying here and we have a lot of work left to do. Kim told the Associated Press on Saturday in a voice message. Kiffin added he has not signed a contract extension with the school. With Kiffin off the market, Auburn is now eyeing a former Mississippi coach, Liberty's Hugh Freeze. The 47-year-old Kiffin is 23-12 and in three seasons as Rebels coach number 20, Mississippi finished his regular season 8-4, losing four of it in the last five, including Thursday's 24-22 loss to Mississippi State. Auburn was playing Saturday at number eight, Alabama, in the Iron Bowl. The Iron Bowl and his coaching search figured to heat up soon after its season concluded. Auburn fired coach Brian Harson earlier this month and has gone two and one since under interim coach Carnell Williams, the former star running back for the Tigers. He's a running back for the Tigers. A person familiar with the search told the AP that Freeze is a candidate at Auburn. The person spoke to the AP on condition of anonymity Saturday because Auburn was not making details of his search public. He was not making details of the search public. Now on to the next story. After six straight losing seasons and more than 20 years removed from his 1990s heyday, Nebraska is turning to Matt Rule to rebuild its football program and make it competitive in the Big Ten Conference. Rule signed an eight-year contract to be the Cornhuskers' next coach and will be introduced Monday at a news conference with the school announced Saturday. The 47-year-old Rule quickly turned around downtrodden programs at Temple and Baylor before leaving for the NFL to coach the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers fired him in October after he started his third season with four losses in five games. 
It is a tremendous honor to be chosen to lead the Nebraska football program, Rue said in a statement. When you think of great, tradition-rich programs in college football, Nebraska is right at the top of the list. The fan base is second to none, and I consider it a privilege to have the opportunity to coach in Memorial Stadium on Tom Osborne Field. My family and I are so grateful to become a part of the Husker family, and we can't wait to get started. It can't wait to get started. Now this was in the local news update of Millennium News 24-7. Log in to get the latest news. Our all social networking sites are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Millennium News 24. Also, our YouTube channel is News Channel M24. Viewers now on both networking, broadcasting, Android, and iOS devices, Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV. Also, all smart TV platforms. Please enjoy your entertainment and latest news and views. Our Millennium TV apps, Millennium TV USA Android, Millennium News on Google. Find us on www.millenniumtv24.com. Now stay with Millennium News 24. Thank you and appreciate the opportunity to speak for ourselves. And when things are assumed about us, I feel it was necessary, 